Preston on West Africa. Um, today we're going to be talking about what were early communities and villages like in West Africa. And this particular PowerPoint, I'm going to give proper attribution, was made by Mr. Conwell. So I've made a few modifications, but other than that, thank you Mr. Conwell for making today's PowerPoint. Our essential question, what were the early communities and villages like in West Africa. So the first thing you need to know is that earliest farm communities in West Africa consisted of extended family and your extended family is not just your parents, your brothers, and your sisters. Your extended family would include aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents, and essentially anyone you are related to. Um, in West Africa, they all lived together in the same village, uh, in the same cluster of homes, like you see in this picture. Uh, and the area directly around the village produced most of their needs, meaning the food, the water, everything was very, very close by. Uh, they did not need to go long distances to get all of those things for themselves. And they also traded with other families um, for goods that they could not produce themselves. So the entire goal of these villages was self-reliance, taking care of your own needs. You only went outside the family or outside the village uh, if you were not able to uh, take care of your own needs. And since I'm not putting a heading at the top here, because this is not my PowerPoint, it does give you the opportunity to say, if I had to create a left side question for three, these three bullet points, what would that left side question be? I'm going to let you contemplate that, and I'm about to switch to the next slide. So um, a lot of these farming communities settled south of the Sahara Desert. We went over the geographic areas in uh, Africa in the last lesson. So you had the Sahara Desert, you had the Sahel region, you had the savanna. Below that, um, you had the forests and the rainforests. So um, the further south you were, um, the more agricultural land was available to actually grow food and the more available water there was to grow that food. So many of these communities joined together to form larger villages. So what started off as small, very family-oriented villages would eventually grow and become a little bit larger. And I would say these two bullet points would actually go with the previous slide. So if you came up with a left side question for the previous slide, um, I would say you probably don't need to come up with another left side question for this slide. So how did towns and cities develop over time? We've started off very small with the family. We've grown a little bit to include other families, but still we're talking very small neighborhood-like settlements. So eventually these grew to become towns and cities. So iron working and trade fueled the growth of cities. Uh, West Africans learned how to work with iron um, and they needed a lot of people to work together to do that. Um, so that kind of forced the economy to move towards having larger towns, larger cities. So the Nok tribesmen made iron tools by about 500 BCE. And remember, that stands for be before the Common Era. So if we were to be making a timeline, uh, that would be to the left of the year zero. Um, they also used charcoal-fired ovens to melt the steel. You cannot mold steel unless you melt it. And when you melt it, that gives you the ability to shape it. So um, finding ways to melt and mold it, very important. So they used charcoal-fired ovens in order to do that. Um, and therefore, they had blacksmiths. Blacksmiths are people who are able to shape metal into tools or objects um, for use by human beings. Blacksmiths were a very, very important part of the West African economy. So these iron tools improved farming techniques, which helped to create a greater demand for the tools. 
As they were able to grow more food and cultivate more land using the tools, people wanted more and more of them. So that made blacksmiths even more important. So this created a food surplus. So when you actually have more food than you need to feed yourself, you have a surplus. And when you have a surplus, you can sell that food, you can give it, you can trade it. Uh, it becomes uh, a very important part of your economy, which helped these towns and villages to grow. And so therefore, you trade with local other villages, other tribes around you, and that trade creates large towns and cities because if you have a central place that you can go to trade, and that's where the business is done, um, people tend to congregate in that area, and that makes that area very important. So therefore, your small village has now become a town. Could you create a left side question for this slide? Think about it, but I'm going to the next slide. So I'm going to try pronouncing this correctly. The city of Gengeno was built in 300 BCE and it was excavated, notice the vocabulary word, in 1977, proving that cities did actually exist in Africa long before Europeans arrived. Uh, Europeans did not bring civilization to Africa. Africa was actually civilized before the Europeans came. And that is definitely important to understand. So this was built at the junction of the Bani and Niger rivers. It is pronounced Niger. And it was a great location for fishing, farming, and trade. What did they trade, you may ask? Well, they traded catfish, fish oil, which is good for your cholesterol level, onions and rice in exchange for salt, iron, copper, and gold. Ooh, that could be on a test. So those pictures at the bottom are pictures of the ruins of Jenny Geno. Transition. So craftsmen in these villages included potters, metalsmiths, weavers, leather workers, and bead makers. These would be the different types of jobs you would have if you lived in one of these villages. And the blacksmiths were most admired as iron was a prized item in West Africa. If your town did not have a blacksmith, you probably did not have a very good town. And many of these blacksmiths were also leaders of their community or village. So if you were a blacksmith, chances are you might actually have been in the political leadership uh, of your town or village or the area because you were an important person just like doctors and lawyers um, tend to be higher up in our power structure in the United States. Kids, I think we're getting close to the end here. Okay, yep, that's the next slide. So we're going to go back. Uh, at this point, it would be appropriate for you to write a summary. And I would say that if you had one sentence for each slide that we've had in this presentation, you would probably have a very effective summary. And you know what that means. I'm going to have you share your summaries with your table partner, and I'm going to randomly call on you to share your summary out loud to the entire class. So now would be the time to go back, look over your notes, decide what the most important things are today, put it into your own words, write your summary, and be prepared to share. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is once again Mr. Blumendahl signing off until the next lesson.